Hi, I'm Forrest Tanaka, and welcome to part four, the home stretch of your own photography website without coding. So we're almost done. So up to now, uh, you've gotten your own hosting provider, you've installed WordPress, and you made some blog posts and pages. Uh, that's still not much of a photography website, so we're going to really finish that off today. Uh, we'll start with optimizing photos for your website, then we'll talk about optimizing your site or extending your site using WordPress plugins, and then uh, we'll end up with a little discussion about search engine optimization, or SEO. So let's talk about optimizing photos. Uh, there's um, several steps to this, or aspects to it. One is preparing your photos for display on the web. And then we'll talk about using the WordPress image manager, or that's what I call it anyway. It's, uh, we've seen it already by putting uh, photos into that blog post, but uh, we'll look at it again. Uh, we'll look at using the WordPress galleries, uh, which is sort of a strange mechanism I'm not a big fan of. So for preparing photos for the web, uh, let's just go over what I'll talk about for this and then I'll actually do it in Photoshop. Okay, the first thing is resizing photos for the destination. Then we'll talk about converting the color space to sRGB. And um, it may already be. This really depends on your workflow. Uh, converting it to 8 bits, you may, it may already be 8 bits. Finally, sharpening it, which everyone should do uh, for photos on the web. And so let's get started with doing that. Now let's prepare a photo for the web. Now, oh, you need to think about what the destination of the photo is. In this case, I'm going to use the home page of our demonstration theme, the clean photo theme, which lets you have a slideshow. Now, I happen to know the slides, uh, the slideshow is 940 pixels wide by 626 pixels tall in this theme. Other themes will be different. So, I know I need to scale my photos to that size. I see people, a lot of people actually, send really huge, like original, unscaled photos to their websites and use their website to scale it down. And you know when you visit a site like that because it'll just gradually load in the picture like that because it's so huge. It's not the way to do it. Frustrate your visitors and Google does pay attention to how long your site loads and will push you down if your site loads slowly. So that hurts you. You have to set the size of your photo to the destination size. In this case, it's the home page. WordPress does scale images itself. Every time you load an image to WordPress, it makes multiple copies at different sizes. Now, how many and what size? That's completely 100% controlled by the theme. So every theme will do something different. So, but in my case, the clean photo theme needs a home page slideshow that's 900, 940 pixels by 626 pixels. So let's prepare a photo for that home page slideshow. You can either use image size, that's a good way to do it, but if you have both height and width to worry about, I often use this uh, crop tool. And I set the width and the height to the destination I want, and pixels per inch if you want. This doesn't actually matter that much. So let's do that. Let's draw a rectangle and it should cover the whole picture uh, because I designed that size 940 pixels by 626 pixels to be a 2 by 3 ratio which is what you get out of a, a DSLR. A compact camera gives you 4 by 3 photos which is um, so in this case it would have to be cropped using this tool. So after you draw that rectangle you hit enter that will turn on it and scale it down. Let's view it at 100%. So this is a scaled down image. So the next step is to sharpen it. Now notice this is a 16-bit image that came out of Lightroom. It's good to export in the deepest possible depth before doing your processing on it. And so let's sharpen it. We'll go to the Smart Sharpen filter in Photoshop. It's a really good tool for this. And uh, I usually, uh, for quickness, just do a couple different options in this amount and radius. I'll often start with 100% amount and one pixel radius. That's pretty aggressive. 
and I, a lot of times I'll just move this dialog out of the way and click and unclick preview and look at this original photo and I can see it does look a little aggressive a little bit noisy on the edges there so let's scale that down a lot of times I'll go to 0.5 radius in that case and see how that looks there I think that looks pretty good but if I wanted to get even less aggressive, if it's still looking too aggressive, I'll go to 50%. Now, there's more precise ways to do this. I find this works very well. So it's pretty subtle now. And for demo purposes, I'll do it that way. Okay, so now it's scaled down. Now we need to convert the color space. Uh, I almost always export in, from Lightroom and ProPhoto RGB color space. And, but anything displayed on the web has to be sRGB color space. That doesn't mean all your visitors' monitors will be calibrated properly for sRGB, but that's really the best you can do. Now, if you don't know what I'm talking about, this is a whole gigantic, huge topic, uh, which I've actually covered in another video, not on my usual YouTube channel, though. Um, I'm still debating what to do on that. Uh, but we need to convert it to sRGB. So go to your edit menu and go down to convert to profile. There's also an assign profile, but that really isn't the one you want. You want convert to profile. So the source color space is ProPhoto RGB and the destination space is a menu and I've chosen sRGB. It has all those numbers after it. The engine on a Mac anyway, you get a choice between Apple's uh, mechanism or Adobe's. I just choose Adobe's. Apple's works really well too. Uh, and the intent. Relative color metric and perceptual are the two you should use with your photos. Relative color metric is good for uh, keeping details. Perceptual is good for keeping colors. Um, I'll just use relative color metric here. I, that's what I usually use because I usually want the detail and don't care as much about color fidelity, which usually doesn't change that much anyway. Uh, but it will in certain cases. And I always use black point compensation, so I'll say OK. Now it's gone through that math. Now it's a sRGB. Now we need to convert it to 8 bits, which you do from the image menu mode, 8 bits per channel. So now it's all ready for the web, all ready for our clean photo homepage. So now let's save for web. Now you need to choose the quality. Uh, use this menu. Start with low, which is a very low quality but the smallest size and I can see some a little more uh, distortion than I'd like to see or artifacting that I'd like than I'd like to see and it's 30k let's change it to JPEG medium so now it's 50k and uh, that's looking a lot better so now oh, the buttons are hidden below the screen because I have the screen set to really low resolution so I'll just hit return and I'll save it to the downloads folder and so now we have an image all set for download and it's good to rename it I actually did this before it's good to rename it to some nice keywords because it may help Google find it in the image search so golden gate uh, fireworks okay so there's our Im image ready for the web so this is our home page right now. Remember our about and contact pages are done. Our home page, which we really want a slideshow on, just has our blog entries. So let's fix that. And now we're entering an area where different themes work things differently, but I'll try to make things as general as possible. And some of it I just can't. So let's make a home page. And remember pages, uh, the pages menu item is where you create new pages. We have about and contact, so let's make a home page. Add new, we'll call it home. <clears throat> or we'll spell it correctly. Call it home, and then what else do we do? Well, if you go along the right side, you'll see a panel called page attributes, and you'll see an entry called template. If you look on this, you'll see home page with slideshow. This menu is controlled totally by the theme that you're using, so every theme will have a different menu. This is just mine. Some have just a whole list of different kind of templates. Templates in this case are specific kinds of pages. 
so for different purposes. And since this is just basically an example theme, uh, it just has two. One is for a regular blog index page and one is for the home page with a slideshow. So we'll choose that. Don't need any text and we'll click publish. Right, so now we got a home page. So let's go back to the home page of our site. And wow, it's not our home page. So how do we do that? And we have a home menu here. Well, let's go back to the dashboard and go down to the settings panel. So under settings, reading, you see front page display. One is your latest post. Well, that's what we see, our latest posts. But if you click the radio button for a static page and then we choose a front page about, nope, home, yes. So that's it. Click save changes. Now if we go to our home page, it's an empty page. It's our home page. Now we need to fill it with a slideshow. So let's do that. Now every photography theme, and for most uh, theme websites, including WordPresses, you can actually search for photography and it'll bring up themes that have photography in their keywords. Um, <laughs> I notice that a lot of times they don't seem very photography related, but it does bring up some really good photography themes. And if you go to uh, pay sites, you'll see some really good ones. In this case, the source of the slides for the slideshow is another page. And so we'll click here on Pages, Add New, and I'll just call it Home Page Slideshow. And then I'll click this uh, media button. I need to zoom in there. And we, we've seen all this before. Select Files, and I'll load up that Golden Gate Bridge photo. Then I'll call it Golden Gate Bridge Fireworks. And in the alternate text, don't really need a caption for it. Click None for the link. It's not going to link anywhere. Uh, we can do Alignment None, and it needs to be full size. Okay, so we'll insert that into the post. All right, and I'll just repeat this for three other photos. And uh, to save time, I'll just cut forward in time uh, until I'm done with this. Okay, so we have all four of our slideshow photos here. And that one's highlighted, that's why it looks blue. So now let's publish. Let's zoom out here, publish. So now this should bring up some questions right away. When is, okay, so we have this homepage slideshow. How do we tie these slides to our homepage slideshow? The second question is, how do we keep this from being a menu item people can click on? This is supposed to be a hidden page. So let's address both of those right now. First of all, uh, in this particular theme, the clean photo theme, I have this theme option under appearance. This is a menu item a lot of themes add. Sometimes we'll call it something a little different. In my case, I only have one item here, and that's a slideshow page ID. Um, I rehearsed this already, so there's a number in here. What it's looking for, well, every WordPress page has an ID, a numeric ID, and that's the one you're going to put in here. So let's find out what the ID is. Go to the pages. Now, we need the home page slideshow. It's a little awkward getting this ID. There's a couple of ways. The way I usually do it is to turn on the browser option. Uh, in Safari, it's, uh, what's it called? The status bar, I think. Yeah, status bar which is down here, which shows you the URL of any link you're hovering over. And if you hover over the homepage slideshow, you'll see at the bottom, uh, I don't know if you can see in the video, there's a number 428, I believe. Let me verify. Oh, it's 42. Okay, so this is page ID 42. I was looking at the ampersand. And so that's the number we have to put into the theme options. So under Appearance, Theme Options, let's enter the number 42, and Save Changes. Okay, now, uh, let's not address the menu problem yet. Let's just go back to our homepage and see what happened. Okay. There's our slideshow. There you go. It's a little small, but I'm running this screen really small so you can see in the video. It's not even VGA height. 
but uh, you can see our, our uh, slideshow works and it's our homepage. Now, what do we do about this menu problem? Well, that's where we enter a new realm and that's menu management. WordPress menu management is really powerful. It probably deserves a video on its own, but let's just fix up this problem, get you familiar with it. Let's go back to the dashboard under appearance menus. Now everything's mostly grayed out because we haven't defined any menus. The menu that we see there is a default one that WordPress just builds as you add pages. But this theme supports a menu, some themes don't. But this one does, so what you do is you click create menu and then give it a name. Actually all you have to do is give it a name. And we'll call it main navigation and then we'll click create menu. Okay, so now our main menu bar has this name and it's empty because now we've overridden the default menu. Go to theme locations, main navigation, click main navigation. This is for uh, when you have more than one menu defined. This theme only supports one menu. If they save, and then what we'll do is if you scroll down, you'll see the section called pages. This lists all your pages. We have four defined. And I want, I'll want i include a home menu, so I'll just click home, contact, and about. This uh, home page menu isn't checked, so it won't be a menu. It'll be a hidden page, exactly what we want. Click add to menu. Now if we look, scroll back up here, we see our menu. And these are draggable, like that. So that determines the order of the menus as they appear. I want the home menu first, and then about, and then contact. So that's perfect. So save menu. Now let's go to our home page. There we go, we got our slideshow. And we have our menu. Now home. It's just this page that we're on, the same as clicking on the name. About, let's make sure it's still our About page. And it is. Contact, let's make sure it's still our Contact page. And it is. Go back home. So cool. It's starting to look like a real photography website. So now let's look at plugins. So that was optimizing photos for your website. And the next topic is optimizing your site using WordPress plugins. Now, what are WordPress plugins? These are actually little uh, pieces of code, usually a combination of PHP, JavaScript, HTML, CSS, that extend your site and any other sites that uh, you add these plugins to. And there are probably thousands of plugins that do sometimes really, really amazing things. And uh, so let's look at how, what they, installing them and some suggested plugins for a basic site. Now a good way to show the use of uh, plugins is to do what most photographers want to do is to have a gallery on their site. You know, like a grid of images and the user can click an image and uh, see the uh, photo that they clicked on larger. So I don't have that functionality in my theme but there are some really good plugins to do that, and I'm going to show you one. So go to your dashboard and go to plugins and say add new. So it brings up this search field, and here you can search the WordPress site for plugins, even though this is your site. It's going, going to search the WordPress site. WordPress keeps a repository of plugins, thousands of them, for just about anything. Now the one we want to search for is called NextGen gallery. So we search plugins. Now it's went out to the WordPress site to look for it. And there it is. So now we can install it. Let's click install now, which will download the zip file to your site, uncompress it, and then ask if you want to activate it. So you can have plugins installed on your site, but not active, and they just don't do anything. Uh, but in this case, you really want to activate it. So let's activate it. Now if you look at the bottom, of this menu, you'll see a change once it's done activating. And there it is, it's added a new menu at the very bottom of your uh, column of menus. And here's a list of all your installed plugins. These two, Akismet and Hello Dolly, are installed with WordPress, but now we've added NextGen Gallery. 
So now let's add some photos. So this new gallery menu has a whole bunch of things in its submenu. Let's click add gallery slash images. And you get to this screen. So what we want to do is create a new gallery and we'll call it just my gallery. You can have as many galleries as you want if you wanted to uh, have different categories of photos on different pages, for example. But we'll just have one in this example. We'll call it my gallery. We'll click add gallery. And then it's going to ask you to upload some images. So let's click select files. And here's some photos I want to upload. So I'll just select one and shift click to the bottom to select all of them and we'll say choose. And so now it has a list of files to upload. It hasn't uploaded them yet. It lets you change your mind on certain ones. But we'll just say we want all of these and then we need to choose a gallery for, to upload into. And that's called my gallery, the one we just created. And we'll say upload images. And then it's uh, uploading each image into the gallery. So let's uh, fast forward to the end of that process. All right, now it's finished uploading the files and it's just creating the thumbnails. And now it's done. Now you have a gallery. And if I click manage gallery, you can see your existing gallery. You have a gallery with all the photos in it. Now, how do you get it onto a web page? Well, let's first create a page. So we'll go back to our pages menu, add new. And we'll call this gallery. And if you look at this toolbar where you can set bold face and all those things, next gen gallery added a button to the end of it. it makes it really easy so just click it and it'll ask you which gallery to put in that pop-up menu lets you choose my gallery uh, there's some options that you can play with we'll just say it's an image list and we'll say insert and so now you see what's called a WordPress short code a lot of um, uh, WordPress plugins that let you insert stuff into your posts you insert it by putting in these short codes uh, they always happen in brackets, left and right brackets. They usually have the name of the plugin and then some other parameters, sometimes many parameters after it. And so we, this is where the gallery will appear. And if we insert above it, let's put in some introductory text. We'll say, please enjoy my photos. And then it'll have the gallery. So let's publish. So now it's published. If we go back to our home page, you'll see there's no gallery menu and that's because we're now doing uh, menus manually so let's go back to the dashboard uh, let's see appearance menus okay remember we made our main navigation menu now we can see gallery as a new option under pages so click that add to menu so now gallery is added to the bottom I want it right after home so let's put it there or maybe between about and contact Save menu, go back to our home page. Now we have a gallery menu right where we wanted it. If we click it, there's our gallery. Isn't that something? So if we click on one of these, it shows our image large. It has some navigation arrows to go through the different photos in your gallery. And it's just a really nice way to do it. Then you can hit escape and they can come out. Uh, they also have this button here, show as slideshow. And then it presents it in a little slideshow. Maybe not the best, but it's there. And then you can click this to go back to the list of photos. So that's pretty cool. And there's that text that's right above that short code that uh, uh, we put in. And so that's how you can add an image gallery to your website using the NextGen Gallery plugin. Now let's look at some suggested plugins. Um, I won't go over all of these, but I just wanted to put these out there. Let's go over some of the really important ones though. One is Fancy Box, which is to cure the problem of uh, when a user clicks on a, um, a photo in a blog post and it looks kind of ugly. So we'll go over that. We already went over NextGen Gallery. And uh, let's look at post thumbnail editor. 
Now let's fix up how photos in our blog look. But before we get there, how do we get to our blog? There's no menu for it anymore. Well, we do have to configure that. So let's go back to our dashboard and let's make yet another page. So I'll go to pages, add new, call it blog, and we won't put anything here. So I'll just click publish, leave the default template. So now what, how do we make this become our blog page? Well, if we go down to settings, reading, now remember where we set our home page? That's where we set our blog page. So we select the post page, will become blog. Save changes. Now, of course, since we're doing our menus manually, we need to do that as well. So go to appearances or appearance menu. There's our blog page. We'll add to menu. So there it is. We'll put it right after the gallery. Save menu. Go back to the home page. And there we go. There's our blog. Let's click on it. Make sure our blog is still there. And it is. So now let's go back to our Hero Some Photos posts. Or post. And now remember when you click on one of these, it shows up just that. The JPEG just shows up as its own page. There's no controls, no nothing. We have to click back to go back to the post. We'd like to do it a little nicer with a light box effect. So let's do that. Go back to the dashboard. So let's load in another plugin. Add new. One called Fancy Box. Search plugins. And again, it's going out to WordPress. And there it is, the Fancy Box plugin. Again, a nice rating here. So we'll install that and activate it. And now let's see, there's probably not very many, if any, configuration for this plugin. And I'm not seeing any. So let's just go back to our blog. Blog. Back to here are some photos. Now let's see what happens when we click on this. Much nicer. So now, I mean, our WordPress bar is sort of obscuring things here. So now anything, any photo we click on shows up much, much nicer. So that'll be an important one to use. And let's look at one more plugin. Add new and look for something called post thumb. Actually, it doesn't matter the case. Editor, post thumbnail editor. So search plugins and there it is. So this lets you edit your thumbnails. And we'll see, show why that's important. Install and activate. All right, so here's our current list of plugins with Fancy Box, Next Gen, and Post Thumbnail Editor. And so let's look at the photos that we have so far. So let's go to Media Library. That shows you all the photos we've uploaded. And so now, why this is nice is because we can change our thumbnails. It's doing the square thumbnail here, and it adds, when you hover over this, it adds this thumbnails uh, link. And it lets you, what I find it most useful for is for editing your square thumbnails that WordPress generates. So now it's cutting off this one uh, firework. I'm going to select that one and any other square ones. I'm not, I suppose this is one. All right. And so now that we've selected our square ones, we can drag a square across this image. And so instead of the default where it took it from there, we can include both of the fireworks. We'll say create thumbnail. And it'll ask us, are these good? And they do look good. Okay. Now, let's escape here. Hopefully that'll let us get out. Unfortunately, I'm running such a small window, not letting me access that closed box. All right. So good. 
Now let's reload the page. Now we can see this updated thumbnail. So why is that important? Well, this particular theme likes square thumbnails. And we may not have seen it before, but let's go to our posts. So here are some photos. And what it uses square thumbnails for is for this featured image. Now, I created this featured image while we were using 2011, which doesn't use square thumbnails. That's a real problem because the sizes of the different thumbnails is determined by the theme. And all these thumbnails were made with a different theme, 2011. So we really need to regenerate the thumbnails for this clean photo theme. WordPress, WordPress has no mechanism to do that. So let's go back to the plugins because there is a plugin to do just that. Add new for plugins. And we'll search for regenerate thumbnails. All right, there it is. Let's install it and activate it. All right, there's our list of some uh, plugins we have now. Let's go back to our media list. Now you can see as you hover over each photo, there's yet another link called Regenerate Thumbnails. There's also a bulk action for Regenerate Thumbnails. So let's just do it for all the photos we've uploaded so far. So we'll click as I didn't say, but showed, click this checkbox that's in the uh, this top bar here, and that'll check every photo you have shown here. And go to the bulk action to regenerate thumbnails. The plugin, the regenerate plugin thumbnails added that menu option. Then we'll click apply, and we'll have to wait a while as it regenerates them. So uh, we'll cut away to the very end. Okay, so it finished regenerating the thumbnails. Let's go back to our media library. And we can see our thumbnail for the Golden Gate Bridge is still there. So let's go back to our posts uh, with the uh, different photos in it. And let's edit it. And now just to be sure, I'm going to remove the featured image because this is the image, this is going to be a square thumbnail that's going to show up on the blog page. And let's reset. Uh, let's see, where'd that go? Oh yeah. We'll reset the featured image. Uh, click the gallery tab, which shows all the photos that are attached to this post. We'll set this as a featured image. And close this, update the post. Okay, the post is updated. Let's go back to our home page and blog. And there you go, our new blog image. And you can click on that and go, go directly to that blog page. And there you go. So now we have what looks like a pretty good uh, photo photography website, including a blog, a homepage with slideshow. Now let's talk a little bit about search engine optimization. As our last topic, let's talk about SEO, search engine optimization. And now let's talk about just two myths because they're just so pervasive that I've seen. One is meta keywords. Now, these are keywords that are hidden from visitors. They're encoded into the HTML of each and every page of your site. Google and Microsoft's Bing ignore them. Yet, every case I've seen of a client hiring an SEO firm, the first thing and sometimes the only thing they do is add meta keywords to the site. Now, if you hire an SEO guy or SEO firm and they do this, don't fire them yet. It could be every single customer they get says, you've got to add keywords to the site. Now, and so they just do it automatically. So if they do that, challenge them. Ask them if they think it really works because you had heard it doesn't. Now, they may say, oh, thank goodness. We've been waiting for a client to say that. But if they insist, no, this will really help your site, then you can fire them. 
it won't help your site. Google engineers, you can search YouTube for a Google presentation. Google engineers say they ignore them. Microsoft has said they ignore them. And it only makes sense because, you know, Google and Microsoft make money off the good search engine result pages or SERPs. If they paid any attention to the meta keywords, the results wouldn't be as good because everyone would be stuffing keywords in there that are totally irrelevant. And so it just only makes sense that they ignore them. So just don't, you can put them in if you want, but it does nothing. People have tested it, it does nothing. The other is a more general myth, and that is you can just do some SEO on your site <clears throat> And sit back and see the hits come in. Well, first of all, hits. When um, someone at Google once said that hits stands for how idiots track success, and it's pretty apt. You can't just sit back and watch the hits come in because search engine optimization success just doesn't work that way. So let's come to some conclusions here. One is Google's not stupid. Microsoft's not stupid. Well, Steve Ballmer. Well, anyway, Microsoft, Bing engineers and management aren't stupid. They know what they're doing. So stop treating them like they're stupid because they're not. They know how to get good search engine result pages. They're always tweaking their algorithms to get better and better and better. There's no magic thing you can do. So, SEO, to get real success, you have to work. There's just no way around it. And it doesn't mean you can let someone else do the work for you. It may work if you get a really, someone really good at it. But um, for the most part, you have to work at it. One, participate in your community. If you're a photographer, participate in photography communities on LinkedIn, on uh, other sites that have good forums. Participate, and that doesn't mean spamming them. That means helping people, sharing. If you write a blog entry, share it to say, hey, I found out about this thing. I think you might be interested in it. Over time, your name will get more recognition because you're so generous to the community. That's partly what I'm doing. Why am I doing this? Because I've got expertise in both photography and WordPress development, so I'm sharing. I'm hoping to help people. I've already gotten some feedback from LinkedIn that they're actually using what was in these videos. And that is so, so cool. So it does take work. Participate in the community. Make good original content for your site, on your blog, on your projects page if you have one, your galleries. Now, it's not so much that by frequent updating it'll help your ranking because people have tested that and it doesn't. And some of the highest ranked sites in different categories are ones which really haven't been updated that much. It's just that they are their authorities in their community. But the way you become an authority in your community is to provide good information. That may mean, you know, just participating in other forums and things like that. But it helps to have good regular content on your site to become an authority. And with authority <clears throat> comes SEO success, really. And then let people know about it. You know, again, this doesn't mean spamming people. But get onto Facebook. There's no conspiracy with Facebook. Get onto Facebook. Get onto Twitter. Get onto LinkedIn. Whatever else. Tumblr. Whatever else. And let people know what you're sharing. And be honest about it. And people will gradually, gradually trust you. It takes work. There are no shortcuts. This is the way it is. So you can see by our last slide here, that's it. That is the whole video series. And uh, so if you follow all four parts through, you should have your own photography website. Uh, you may spend a lot of time trying to choose a nice theme. And I'm going to have uh, a link to where you can get my theme in the comments or the comments, depending on what device you're on. And so uh, I hope this has been really helpful and it's been really rewarding uh, showing this and uh, show the things that I know. And um, since I've seen this question come up a lot, um, I felt it was a real need in the photography community. Um, There's some other services that I really haven't been happy with, like, uh, should I name names? Uh, maybe I'll name one, Livebooks, which uh, has given photographers 
all these flash websites that just are lousy, really. Um, they do poorly in SEO, and they're hard for visitors to use, and they take forever to load. And more likely than not, visitors will just click away from your site before it loads. With this kind of site, it loads on every single device, no problem. It does well in SEO, as long as you're doing the right, the best practices, and uh, loads very quickly. So, I will say farewell. Good luck on your own websites. Feel free to ask me questions or to ask any other WordPress developers questions about this kind of material. Mm -hmm.